TED Talk. Tonight on The Rundown, monumental owner Ted Leonsis is answering questions about the Caps and Wizards move out of D.C. And cracking down on the use of artificial intelligence in robocalls, what the FCC is doing to keep you safe. And walking through civil rights history, a new honor for a local attraction. You're watching the News 4 Rundown. Thank you for joining us for the News 4 Rundown. Our newscast streaming for you. I'm Tommy McFly. I'm Sean Yancey. It is Thursday, February 8th. For the very first time since announcing plans to move the Capitals and Wizards from downtown D.C. to Virginia, team owner Ted Leons has answered questions about the move. Lots of questions for him. The deal, which was made public, it only was in December. It feels like it was so much longer than that. It sparked both criticism and celebration. Leons has sat down with our News 4's Mark Seagraves to talk about a number of topics, including traffic concerns, how much crime played a role in their decision to leave downtown, and how the move will impact local businesses, plus a look at Leontes's legacy here in the DMV. So, you know, people have asked, do we have an issue with the city? No. I wish we communicated better. I left our building the other night, last game. Sixth Street was closed. I said, in most other communities, if there's going to be construction or there's an issue, you tell the team and they put it on the screen and they go, 6th Street is closed, take an alternate route. You know, traffic, I came K Street the other day in the morning and I was shocked at why is there so much traffic? Well, the lights aren't synced. That should be an easy fix. Look outside, there's a wooden outdoor eatery that just showed up one day. It stood up. If you look at it, it looks like someone went to a lumber store and built it. Oh, it's right across the street from where our trucks and the buses come in and out. It's in the way now, and people are parked there and having to make the U-turn to go into the parking. Um, you go, won't it be great when we don't have those kinds of issues? So the challenges that the city have and the challenges that flow down to us is the coordination of federal, local, city council, and I won't have that out in Virginia. Traffic is a top concern for residents who live near Potomac Yard and fans who need to drive to the proposed arena. A financial study produced for the Virginia governor's office and obtained by News 4 says the arena complex could host more than 300 events a year. And a transportation study released last week for the city of Alexandria projects that more than half of all the fans will arrive to the complex by car. The games themselves, right, um, most of them are on weekends and Fridays, right? I mean, you saw the study, it's like 40 nights for those two games. And concerts, those are fantastic, but concerts start eight, nine o'clock at night. So, you know, on the traffic thing, go, okay, well, let's be specific. When is the traffic heaviest? Five to seven o'clock. All right, so we got 40 nights that we have to deal with. And, and I'm not poo-pooing it, but I'm saying, let's get the data, let's get the facts. Boy, that problem is a lot smaller to solve and we have a lot of resources and a lot of time to fix it. How about crime? Did that factor into your decision at all? No, and, and I, w I want to be very straightforward here. Um, I think our mayor has the toughest job in leadership and government in the country. And I've told her, I know you will get this right, um, but it's become harder for you to fix it because of all of the things around. You know. One of the things I lived in fear of is a fan gets injured, a fan is robbed. I take that really, really personally, but I don't control the road to the parking lot five streets away. And that's what I would talk to the mayor about. And she understands. What do you say to DC residents who feel like you're abandoning. This, the teams have been here for so long, through good times and bad times, DC residents have supported the teams. <clears throat> what do you say to the, just the citizens who, who say they feel like they're being abandoned? I understand, and um, we're gonna be here for four or five more years. 
and the future is going to be fantastic and we're three and a half miles away. I don't believe I'm abandoning DC. That's probably something that maybe I misunderstood. And I've been asked, well, what about the small business owners here? They're not my constituency. My constituency are our fans, the players, the employees, the union workers, and they're all going to benefit dramatically. I don't feel responsibility to those other businesses. I feel responsibility, as I said, to our fans, to our players, to our, our employees, and you know, to the neighborhood itself. You talk about that decision that Mr. Polo made to, to move into D.C. You know, he's remembered as a, as a great philanthropist, somebody who took a big risk on downtown, on this area, and really is the catalyst um, with his own money for what we enjoy now downtown. Are you concerned about your D.C. legacy? I mean, you went to Georgetown University. You've had D.C. in your DNA for a very long time. Are you concerned about what your D.C. legacy will be if you move the teams out? Um, Mr. Paul was a great man, and whatever his legacy is, he earned it, he deserved it, and I love the man. I'm going to build, though, the greatest building, the greatest sports community, because I've got the land and the room to do it. And then we're going to win more Stanley Cups, and we're going to win an NBA championship. That's how my legacy will be made. But you can't define what my legacy is on NBC. That's not, that's not for you to do. My legacy will be earned over a body of work, and I have zero concerns about what um, people think my legacy is right now for doing the right thing for my fans, for my players, for my employees. A wide-ranging conversation there. Um, you know what, there were a lot of different things that came out of that conversation, and I know that's not the end of what we will hear from Ted Leonsis, and mm -hmm. certainly we're also expecting to hear from D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser later this week on what he had to say, so we're looking forward to that. A group of people from D.C. and Alexandria rallied outside Virginia's capital today to oppose this proposal that would move the Caps and the Wizards to Potomac Yard, but lawmakers delayed today's hearing and said several pieces of the bill are still in flux, and it's just not a top priority for the majority of them. Andrew Wilder talked to one woman who came down today hoping to voice her concerns, was disappointed that she didn't get to actually address the lawmakers. We were hoping to be heard on this bill that will affect many of us so deeply, but it's been so rushed. Honestly, I'd rather they take not just another day, but another year mm -hmm. and study this appropriately. The bill has until Tuesday to be restructured and passed. If it is not passed, the governor can push his own bill into the General Assembly, and we will, of course, keep you posted. We've been on this since the minute it broke, that potential monumental move. To find out more about our previous coverage and get future updates, go to the NBC Washington app. It is all there for you. Now, let's get to some of the other top stories we're following. Today, the nation's highest court heard oral arguments that could determine if former President Donald Trump can run for office again. It stems from the Colorado Supreme Court's decision to ban Mr. Trump from the state's presidential primary ballot for his actions that led to the insurrection at the Capitol January 6, 2021. His legal team argued he didn't storm the Capitol, so it should not qualify as an attempt to overthrow the government. The Supreme Court is expected to rule within weeks. President Joe Biden will not face charges for his handling of classified documents. Special Counsel Robert Herr investigated how these documents got to President Biden's home and a private office he used after his vice presidency. The special counsel's report said Biden's memories about the documents are significantly limited, to quote him. It goes on to say that Biden, if he were put on trial, would be found potentially without reasonable doubt. Following the special counsel's report, GOP presidential hopeful Nikki Haley called on President Biden to take a mental competency test. 
It's in line with her position on requiring politicians over the age of 75 to undergo similar tests on the campaign trail. Haley said politicians make decisions on national security. They should, quote, be at the top of their game. The Senate has advanced a standalone bill that will provide aid to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. 17 Republicans joined Democrats to pass the bill along. It's still not clear, though, if the new aid package will pass the Congress. There are additional votes in the Senate that have to happen, and House Republicans have not committed to even bringing it to the floor. The FCC is now taking a stand against robocalls. The agency ruled that artificial intelligence generated voices in those robocalls are now illegal. The ruling determined the calls violate the Telephone Consumer Protection Act of 1991, which restricts junk calls that use artificial voice messages. The FCC will now have to punish or will now have the ability to punish companies that use AI voices in robocalls with fines up to $23,000 per call. D.C. is moving forward into the world of artificial intelligence today. Mayor Mariel Bowser signed an order that would allow D.C. government to harness the power of A.I. Uh, we know how much email changed our lives. Then smartphones changed them again. Uh, and we want to make sure that D.C. government is on the forefront of how we use A.I. And we know that there are a lot of pop possibilities. The Bowser administration says the use of AI can create a more effective and inclusive government. The mayor also said that it can be used to find and hire talent, connect D.C. residents to employment opportunities, monitor trends, and more. Fredericksburg, Virginia is filled with a wealth of civil rights history. And last year, the city rolled out a new civil rights history trail. Dominic Moody reports that a historic attraction is joining that National Civil Rights Trail. Dominique? The contributions of black residents in and around Fredericksburg are getting national recognition, and the trail will allow those from around the world to learn about civil rights history right here in Northern Virginia, like the Freedom Rides in 1961. We are excited to announce that the city of Fredericksburg Civil Rights Trail, Freedom, a work in progress, is being added to the United States Civil Rights Trail as the fourth site in Virginia. Today, Fredericksburg's Civil Rights Trail joining thousands of other historical markers around the country, now becoming a part of the United States Civil Rights History Trail. If we all can preserve and appreciate and understand and what we have in common is so much greater than what divides us. A three mile trail dedicated to the unheard stories of black residents throughout the city. Traces of the harsh realities many faced are baked into different sections near downtown. Visitors can expect close to two dozen stops. We're telling those stories in full. Uh, we have not erased them. Um, we have not edited them to make people feel comfortable. Chris Williams and Victoria Matthews started the venture back in 2020 to shed light on the African-American trailblazers of yesterday and today. The more people who understand these stories, who hear about them, maybe we won't repeat history and do these horrible things to other people. Groundbreakers like Robert Christian, the first to desegregate Fredericksburg's Murray School, to Charles Dyson, the first black police officer who was not allowed to arrest white people. One of the stops along the trail is Shiloh Baptist Church, and it's a place of worship and education, and it also served as the host meeting spot during the sit-in movement inside of the city. This is the truth, and we need to tell it. Um, this is the time in our country's history that we really need to be open and honest and have conversations that will help bring us together. Remembering our country's harsh truths while forging ahead toward a united future. In Fredericksburg, Dominique Moody, Useful. Such a big honor for them. And Vice President Kamala Harris also sent a letter to the city to commemorate the historic day. All right, coming up on the News 4 Rundown, a collection for sale like no other. Coming up after the break, we're going to tell you how you can take home one of these amazing pieces of history while also supporting local students. We'll be right back.
And welcome back to the News 4 Rundown. For 50 years, mm -hmm. Duke Ellington School of the Arts has been putting students in the spotlight. Countless alums like Denise Graves and Mumu Fresh and Dave Chappelle have gone on to incredible careers. Indeed they have. This weekend, you will have the chance to own a piece of the school's theatrical history and support their current students. The school is opening up its costume archives to a very unique flea market. Yes, Tristan Kier Francis, Duke Ellington School of the Arts Technical D Design and Production Department Chair, and Mike Murray, who runs the costume shop is joining us. Welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. All right, so what is in this archives? You brought some beautiful dresses with mm. us here mm. today. Thanks for bringing the ladies in. Indeed. What are we looking at here? Nothing but heaven. <laughs> right. Nothing but heaven. There are hundreds of gowns that we've had in this costume vault for 50 years. Mm -hmm. The school has gone through several iterations of design and modernization. And this is the first time that we're allowing cameras to see these beautiful costumes and gowns that have been gifted to us and constructed mm -hmm. by, our, by our students in this 50 years that we've been in business mm -hmm. teaching kids about costuming. So you have more than 100 gowns that you're mm -hmm. going to open up to the public mm -hmm. for the first time. I'm just curious as you guys were we're going through the archives right. and also looking at the other props. Did you find anything that you were like, oh, surprised you? We found some fun stuff. Tell them about what, what we found the other day. Oh, we've, we found some designer dresses. Uh huh. Suits. Like who? Yeah. Oh. We've got some yeah. Chanel. We've oh. got some Armani oh, pieces wow. as okay. well. Yeah. And then uh, we have vintage pieces too. Wow. Yeah, early as the early 1900s, okay. 1960s pieces, beautiful dresses and 70s pieces. A lot of really interesting things that you won't find today. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm yeah. a big collector of oh. vintage. Oh, are you? That's, I can't, oh. That's where it all comes from. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. You were mentioning wait. too, it's not just dresses. There's other audio equipment. There's other things yeah. that people should be we, thinking we about. We have old albums, you know, vinyls coming back. We have a lot of audio equipment. So we have producers in Washington, D.C. and the DMV area that are looking to, you know, make some beats and all kinds of, you know, interesting things. Um, we've got it all. We've got a lot of great pieces. Mm -hmm. okay. Also great for prom season. Right Absolutely. Around right too. around the corner. And that was, that was the motivation for this. Yes. A lot of young women in the DMV area cannot afford to spend thousands of dollars right. on gowns mm -hmm. and this is our way of taking a lot of these beautiful dresses that cost thousands of dollars to mm -hmm. construct a lot of hours of labor and sell them for under a hundred dollars we have dresses oh, yeah. for $25 like oh, this yeah. Victor Costa like these are these Which, are iconic what, what is this? this is a Victor Costa okay. dress here and this is a dress that's that's, that's on sale for $80 wow. and mm -hmm. um, someone may want to wear this to prom someone may oh, want to yeah. wear it to the you know Metropolitan Gala or anything Absolutely. Kennedy Center. And see something Sorry, like, like this would mm -hmm. be like 30 35 yeah. shut up mm -hmm. yes Okay, I mean, John's I'm just, got a credit card. I'm just saying, like, I mean, there, uh -huh. you guys watching right now, I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many, and then young people are so creative, too. Yeah. They yeah. might take this dress Absolutely. and make it shorter or yeah. turn it into and pants. You just never know. Many of these gowns have incredible stories. They've been on our theatrical stages, and, you know, people like Denise Graves might, might have worn this back in the day when she was a student. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got that beautiful girl right behind you that's quite stunning. Mm -hmm. um, that's a showstopper. So we've got a lot Slide of showstoppers. Here we go. Yeah. Yes, Isn't that fun? Can. Look at the detail mm -hmm. down here. A lot of work. This is fabulous. Okay. Okay, how many, like, you know, between the gowns and the um, the musical recording mm -hmm. equipment and the other props, how many things are going to be a part of this? More than 500 pieces um, of wow. various items will be on, on sale. The most is coming out of our costume vault. Mm -hmm. um, and we have old prop pieces and furniture pieces that we've built in our scenic department. Uh, so this is something that can possibly outfit your home, your closet. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit for everybody. Mm -hmm. Home by Duke. Yes. Body by Duke. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's it. That's, that's, that's exciting. It. And dressed by Duke. There, yes. there you yeah. go. I, li I like Absolutely. that one. Um, How does the money raised yeah. help to support the students who are here now? What's it going go to go to do? So we every year we take a trip to New York City and mm -hmm. with our technical design and production kids. And we want to take them to see the Wiz and get a tour of Lincoln Center. So this, this is a great opportunity for us to get rid of some things that are historical, that can mm -hmm. go into people's homes and, and hopefully you know, make their lives much better and more colorful and give our students an opportunity to have some fun and, and, and learn as well. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much is that Chanel dress? So, so the Chanel dress originally was yeah. 7500 uh -huh. marked down to 4500 We'll probably let it go for 2000 and it's oh, quite okay. beautiful. So just yeah. to be clear, the brand Chanel new. dress is not $34, okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ooh, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, by a long shot. <laughs> <laughs> but still, that's way better than a group yeah. one. I mean, Chanel yeah. for two grand, mm -hmm. you know, you go. you're in the market. And we, and we also have Prada shoes and Louboutin yeah. shoes. We've got a lot of things that we've used over the years. You'll be surprised what's in our costume vault. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's like we need an entire cake at a, at a charity event. Calories don't count when you're helping people out. Same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. there you the go. credit card doesn't count when you're helping people out. Raising Indeed. money for an incredible, mm -hmm. incredible cause. Yeah. Tristan and Mike, thank you so much for joining thank us you. tonight thank on you. The Rundown. You can go check out the sale. It's Saturday from 10 to 3 in Georgetown. <laughs>
And uh, congrats on this and the next 50 years of Thank Duke you. Ellington. Where'd Sean go? I, she's I'm she's a model. I'm trying to get in here with these <laughs> fabulous dresses here. All right. Thank you guys so much for Thank coming. You. We appreciate it. All right. Still ahead here on the rundown. Super Bowl 58 is Sunday, but the actual start of the game, like the time it starts, that's still a mystery. After the break, an expert explains why it's so hard to accurately predict kickoff time. Next. And welcome back. Americans are driving at a record setting pace, according to the Department of Transportation. A record 3.2 trillion miles were traveled around the U.S. roads in 2023. Those numbers are similar to 2019, but the 2023 record tops the pre pandemic levels for the very first time. As we all know, driving sharply declined after COVID lockdowns were imposed in early 2020. The rideshare service Lyft is bringing its new Women Plus Connect program to the district. The feature allows women and non-binary riders to increase their chances of getting a female or non-binary driver. Lyft first rolled out the feature back in September, and since then, more than 2 million have turned on the feature. The feature will launch in the district next Tuesday. All right, let's take some live pics of Allegiant Stadium right now that is hosting the Super Bowl. Maybe you've heard of it, the building excitement. You can feel it from Las Vegas, but it's not just about the game. There are some star studded performances, too. Yeah, uh, some of the entertainers gave a preview of what you can expect. Reba McIntyre will be singing the national anthem. Post Malone will sing America the Beautiful and Andra Day will sing Lift Every Voice and Sing. Now, the halftime headliner here. We're talking about Usher. Mm -hmm. He did not give away many specifics, but he did say he's heard rumors. You know, there's been these fantasy lists that have been going out and people trying to figure out what song I'm going to perform first, middle, last, who's going to come on the stage with me. Yeah. What I did is I, I was very mindful of my past, celebrating my present, which is here in Las Vegas, and thinking about where we're headed in the future. Okay, Bill. that uh, I'm now I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Who do we think is going to perform? I with was Usher? wondering that because he's hasn't had any like. I mean, he's had collaborations over the years, but there's no like mega collaboration mm. over the years. I'm trying to think about that here. We'll have Usher, to wait and see. Mariah Carey. I don't know. Do you okay. believe Super Bowl 58 is only three days away? All right, I'm still trying to figure out the Usher thing. I just hope he sings. Yeah. Do you think he will? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Usher should be getting ready for Super Bowl Sunday's big show. The eight-time Grammy winner is living his best Vegas life. Yeah, in a new trailer, some of his buddies are living the hangover nightmare. Where are you going? Christopher. Tim. <laughs> what up? Hey. We all here. Hey, buddy. Yeah. How was dinner last night? Something happened last night, Tim. Luda lost Usher. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, I'm sorry, bro. Usher's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. That was Apple founder, by the way, Tim Cook there talking to the group. And that was DC native Taraji P. Henson. The delivery, so good. Ludacris and Lil John realized that they lost Usher somewhere in Sin City. So they got to go find him. John may be a special guest joining Usher on stage. Oh. Who knows? During Sunday's show. Oh, okay. Now think about mm -hmm. that. Maybe Ludacris and maybe Taraji. Mm-hmm. Love to see that. Okay, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, you know, for many, many people, Super Bowl Sunday is about eating the snacks, hanging out with friends, watching the big game on a big screen, and it typically begins with the national anthem, fireworks, and then, of course, football. But what time will the game actually kick off? As NBC's Noah Pransky details, it's an enigma that's mystifying fans, and it's been happening for decades. What time does the Super Bowl start? 6 p.m. Eastern, 6.30, 40 minutes after the hour, 6.45 Eastern time? Why is it so hard to find an exact kickoff time? They want to have viewers tuning in throughout that 6 to 6.30 Eastern half hour. There's a lot of dollars in that. I mean, it's one of the very most Googled questions on the entire planet for one week in the year. And only one week in the year, as Google Trends confirms. So I went on a bit of a journey to find out when America's biggest sporting event actually starts. I found a couple of guys who might know. My name's Eric Weinberger. I was the executive producer at the NFL Network for 15 years. He now runs a podcasting company called Believe. Hi, I'm Dennis Denninger. I spent uh, 25 years as a production executive at, at ESPN. And he now teaches a Super Bowl course at Syracuse University. What time does the Super Bowl start? Why is it so damn hard to get an answer on that? It's the biggest showcase 
for the NFL to get across all of the things it stands for. They're hoping that people will tune in as early as possible in that 6 to 6.30 hour Eastern time and, and catch most of the messaging that they want to deliver. The NFL wants as many of those 200 million viewers as possible to take in that pregame and a few extra commercials. Every second of the lead up to kickoff is scripted. They need the anthem person to be out there. They need the, the fireworks to go off. They need the coin toss to happen. It is rehearsed ad nauseum and they hit it every time. So the exact kickoff time is exact, but this year's broadcaster CBS is keeping those details close to the vest. When I reached out to the network, a spokesperson responded with a press release that revealed the pregame coverage begins at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific, with entertainment beginning at 6 Eastern and the game 6.30-ish. It's 6.32, it's 6.33, something in that, in that area. 6.34, that's my educated guess. Lesson learned? We're all gonna tune in anyway, and don't believe everything you see on the internet. Noah Pransky, NBC. I bet it's a bet. Mm -hmm. I bet it's a bet. People will bet what time will the game actually start. I would take a line on that. That's a sports bet I would, I would know how to understand. You would do that? Yeah, why not? You would, you, no it, one's going to get it right, I'm just saying. How many Taylor Swift shots, too? I'm going to bet on that. Mm -mm. I go 635. Mm. One dollar, Bob. Thanks for joining us for the rundown. I'm Tommy McFly. I'm Sean Yancey. Have a great evening, everybody. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.